Good evening guys, I uh, just wanna make a quick video on the pound dollar and this was a gap CPR trade that we had analyzed uh, last week, Wednesday. And uh, if you uh, missed it, obviously uh, everything is recorded. So if you go back to the 16th of December on our group call right here, what you'll see is you'll see um, basically the analysis, right, of where we were talking about where the, uh, the pound uh, dollar CPR uh, zone would have been. And in this video, I'll pretty much mark out exactly why that area, right, I don't know, can't, can't see it there, but it was basically where that um, uh, support zone was. Um, and you can see pretty much how it played out. Which was very nice. So we dragged this across. So it had been at the 132. So we're waiting for basically price to come down here, and this would have been the um, the zone, obviously, the uh, demand zone that we were talking about in the video. So anything around there is what we should have been looking for. And again, just to just to go over that zone um, and and understand why. Uh, this was a really, you know, top-notch trade. I think it was Fitz that pointed this out, and he, uh, he, this is the reason why I went over it um, last week, and I'll go over it again quickly. So what happens is, is that you've got uh, you've got traders that are pretty much in, you know, last week on the 13th of December, who would have been going short, yeah? And what we're trying to do is we're not trying to trade how everybody else trades and support and resistance. We understand that traders, you know, we need um, a, a, an edge in in, um, in the game, in the market, right? And it's zero sum game edge where money's not made, it's taken, yeah? It's taken from, and money is transferred from the loser to the winner. And one of the ways that we can do that and uh, uh, help facilitate that is by understanding where losing traders are. And there would have been a whole bunch of losing traders around here. Why? Because they would have expected prices to go to the downside. And you can pretty much see this, right? You see a nice area of support. You see another area of support. And you get what? Breakout traders. Remember, there's only three traders. Breakout traders, retracement traders, and level traders. Yeah. Those are the three types of traders many different strategies but those are where you know they they will all reside um and then what you get is prices gap up here and there's an argument that does say that there would have been traders that would have you know been taking um profit off at the weekend but lots of traders don't right but so um but there's definitely demand here either way you look at it because prices pretty much gap up so as prices started to go to the upside a lot of traders who you know were holding swing trading uh, based off of this uh, you know lower highs and lower lows and typical price action um, would have been caught in their positions and again many traders would say well wouldn't it have been stopped out by now and the answer is no because um, traders suffer from something called loss aversion bias yeah loss aversion bias which basically means losses feel worse than gains feel good. And how that plays out in the Forex market is um, that traders will move rem and remove their stop losses to, so as prices go against them. And they're seeing rather than losing, let's say, for example, you know, 2% on the trade, now they're down, you know, 10% as prices go against them. And they don't want to realize that loss. Yeah, they do not want to realize that loss they don't want to crystallize the loss so they they hold and pray that prices are going to come back but as prices are going against them and keep going higher right they're caught in their positions and this is the pain phase as well because as prices are going against them and they're you know unrealized profit uh sorry unrealized loss yeah is uh is getting bigger and bigger at this point yeah so they thought that in here that there would have been some sort of you know relief or prices made that gap would have filled and the next best best trade in the book is what a break-even trade or a small loss after being down maybe 10 15 20 percent 30 percent if you get to maybe you know maybe back to your you know two percent original two percent loss or even three percent or even five percent you're going to take that after going through maybe you know seeing your unrealized loss at maybe 25 30 percent so because you're going to thank your lucky stars right and that's what 
traders with loss aversion bias do. So anyways, continuing on, this is the pain phase. Yeah, so this is all pain because again, their unrealized loss um, is, uh, is, is, is causing them a lot of pain. They're praying and wishing that prices can come back down to at least a small loss. And what I'll do is see that when prices came back down into this area, where these guys were originally caught, yeah, so they caught in their positions, they get, and this is the pain phase, they get somewhat relief. And all this is, is just understanding the supply and demand equation at a level, right? At why is there likely to be more demand than supply, or why is there likely to be more demand supply than demand at this area here? Now, none of us know the exact turning point, none of us know. But what we do know, right, is when we're talking about the, the uh, zero sum game and understanding and trading against our opponents, is understanding that anyone who went short here, yeah, to exit or to take profit at a small loss, they have to do what? They have to buy. If they sold here, it's the opposite transaction. Buy. It's buying. And buy orders are what? Demand, yeah? You've got traders who sold up here who were looking to take profit where? At a problem area where prices have previously reversed here and also here yeah so they're going to take profit where especially doing you know during this drop down here yeah they're going to take profit here that's more buying which is more demand yeah and then you've got traders that simply just will buy at levels of support and resistance and again we've got support support resistance there and then you've got support there right got a nice little pin bar that's more buying yep so this is the reason why we have more demand from a technical analysis perspective than supply yeah there's more there's likely to be more demand here than supply you can pretty much see what happened yeah um so that's pretty much it and again like i said we went over this on um, on the uh, last week Wednesday you know you can watch the video go to around 48 47 minute mark you can you know you'll be able to see it yeah so this is where I'm explaining it from the beginning uh, so 47 minute mark and was talking about this you know this currency pair again I didn't take the try didn't take the trade because um, uh, of, of brexit it's a bit too volatile but you can pretty much see um, you know technical patterns um, you know it, it, it play out of course it might not have played out because it's all to do with fundamentals right we need our fundamentals and risk sentiment analysis and if we're unsure about that from the from the from the top then i don't care what technical analysis uh, is saying um you know risk sentiment and fundamentals do come first but this is a great exercise in understanding just pattern recognition understanding the mechanics behind it and if you did you know get long i'm not saying it wasn't a, a, a great trade technically technically i loved it and i say that in the video i love this trade technically it's just that i can't take it based off of buying the british pound um in in these volatile um situations right there's a lot of uh, volatile situations um uh, and with Brexit and nobody knows whether a deal's going to get done, how the pound is going to react. Um, there are better fundamental and risk sentiment trades out there personally. So this could have easily have gone you know, the other way because as we know, fundamentals and risk sentiment uh, 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 would drive price. Fundamental technical analysis doesn't drive price, but just understanding this whole process and how you know really good this this trade was from a um you know from a from a capture pain relief perspective these gap trades don't happen too often yeah and there's another there's another one actually up here right if you want to actually get short at the moment that's a really nice short this whole area would be an area of supply because everyone who's everyone at the top of the this market especially at the highs is definitely caught in their positions at the moment so this is the beginning of a potential reversal around here again and i'm not saying that it is whether it is or it isn't right i think if anything probably there would be a gap cpr but the best areas obviously to look for sell trades are going to be i'd probably say around here anyone who's who's got in long at that level there and above that level so let's just do that so anyone who's got long definitely at this level here 
from this 135 up to this 136 is definitely caught in their positions. But from a gap CPR, you've got it here as well, I think. But that, um, and if that doesn't work, you know, turn around right there, then the second entry, depending on where you place your stop, if you require a second entry, but the, the underside of this would be a great short technically. But again, it's just the, the, the pound at the moment, you know, deal or no deal. Is, uh, is really putting a, uh, um, uh, for me anyway, it just makes it very uncertain. Um, and uh, like I said, there are, there are better fundamental trades out there and risk sentiment trades, but doesn't mean that you can't take it, just maybe risk you know a lot less than what you normally would. And trading over the Christmas period anyway, for me um, is, you know, not, not, not really, uh, I'm not really entering any new trades um, over the Christmas period. Um, apart from necessarily, uh, I will be maybe looking at into 2021, new year, maybe first, second week. Um, but just in general, I'm not necessarily looking to take any new trades. Um, but this is again, just an example of, um, you know, how the trade played out. But this is a nice, again, another really nice technical trade. And um, if you do want, if you do think that the, the, the US dollar is a bargain at this price, that's what, you know, really matters fundamentally. Um, and if the British pound, if they don't do a deal in the end, then again, that is gonna be a really nice short. So um, uh, fundamentally, but again, that's up to you whether you wanna take that trade over Christmas with low volatility, etc. Anyways, guys, take care. And um, I will probably post a couple more videos this week in the group. <coughs> Um, if I see any, you know, um, you know, setups or whatever, if anyone's got anything they want me to look at, just post it in the, uh, um, in the relevant channel and I will try and get back to you guys ASAP. But again, uh, if I don't speak to you before Christmas, I hope you have a merry, merry Christmas. Um, enjoy the time off and, uh, you know, we'll get back to, you know, some proper trading and real trading when uh, the markets return. All right, guys, take care. Speak to you soon.